Hello, my friend. It is Saturday the 13th. I forgot yesterday it was Friday when I did that one. You know how I am about my Fridays. So let's celebrate Saturday. <laughs> I'm Pat Sloan and this is Jumping June Challenges, Quilt Challenges. And the challenge for today says the color blue. So that's the challenge part. The color blue is show me a quilt that is the color blue that you have made. Uh, or if you're just getting ready to make one that's the color blue, to, you know, show the fabric. Uh, if you are just here watching this on YouTube, then uh, tell me about it. Tell me about your quilt that you made that's pretty much true blue. I'm like thinking, what did I make that was mostly blue? The one I sent to my brother, the traffic jam, that's mostly blue, so, okay couple things that I have not reminded you of <laughs> is that you want to be sure you have a jolly bar to do the uh, the jolly the jolly uh, snowflake mystery quilt along so I will link you up to the directions the supply list uh, what you need it doesn't take a full jelly roll so if you have you know some Christmas fabric you know, of your own you can cut your own strips Yes. And then the other thing is the sampler will be coming out right at the end of the month. So if you have not ordered your book yet, you can still do it and it'll probably get here, you know, maybe a week late if you're now ordering. Who knows? Maybe maybe the shipping will all start to go more quickly soon and it'll come sooner. But you don't want to miss out. That one is going to be so cute. And I've decided I'm going to back that one in cuddle, like the um, minky type stuff. And I already have that. So I'm excited to have that soft cuddly back on that sampler. I think it's going to be, I'm going to keep that one for sure. Okay, another tool that uh, we've talked about that you might find useful for your free motion quilting are some gloves. Uh, these are some from the Fat Quarter Shop that I really like because they are thin, they're not too bulky, they actually have grippers on both sides, so I guess if one side starts to wear out the gripper, you just flip them over, so they're all like, you know, can go either way. Uh, now, if you have never used gloves, try like looking, do you have some garden gloves? It's the sort of, you don't want them too bulky. I find most garden gloves are way too bulky. Um, so gloves made for this are nicer, but you can try them out. So if you have garden gloves, just put a pair on and try it out. See if that helps you. Because some people find that very useful. Okay, I have put Grandma's Kitchen, the first two sections there up on the wall. Uh, I will, Bring them down here for tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll have them, uh, that quilt, so that we can look at the different sections and the quilting. But you can actually see that over in my whole series where I showed you quilting this in a series of posts. And you can see all the pictures there. And the link is down below. And while you're there, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe and click the bell so that you will get notices. You'll know when the new videos come out. Okay. We are, oh, it's behind me. Jeez, I'm like looking over here for it. <laughs> Where is the quilt? So here is the quilt. So I am going to take a section and we're gonna quilt it. So I will take something easy <laughs> to do on camera right now this time. So when, and cause I wanna talk about where you look. That's another question that somebody had is they said, well, where do you look? And the same is, I think, true for free motion as it is for walking foot, uh, anything that, that you're doing. So let's, let's come down here. So if we have this block here, this is just like the traffic jam block. I wonder where that came from. Okay, so if I am going to be quilting and using my walking foot, or if I was free motion quilting and going out to here, and to here and to here and to here. What I am doing is as I'm quilting, I am looking ahead. So if my foot's back here, I'm looking to where I am going up here. And once I get there, as I get there, I'm shifting my eyes to the next point. I want my eyes to be where I want to be going. So I want to be hitting that point. So I want to be shifting. Before I hit it, I want to be shifting my gaze out here. You don't want to be looking right where you're stitching. It's always ahead, ahead of you. Okay, so now I have white thread in here, but I am going to just 
do some of the walking foot across here. And I do have a guide beam on my Solaris and it is built into the machine. It is not something you add on. Uh, several baby lock machines have this. Uh, I also have not done any grid work on here yet, yet. Like for this one, I will probably, you know, should come down like really close, like an eighth of an inch from, from the seam and just sort of lock this in, lock in along here so that uh, they don't shift. But we're just going to go for this and I will do that a little bit later. Um, let me, whoops, everything, I'm hitting everything. This is uh, sewing with camera. Okay, let's come over here and get a little bit closer. So uh, normally I would want to have a little bit of thought about what I'm doing, you know, what the plan is, and, be, and and rather than just sitting down with the walking foot and just starting, I like to know, like, am I going to do like a serpentine in here? Am I going to do cross hatch? Am I going to maybe outline this? You know, I want to know before I come in here so that I have a plan and it helps me. So in this one, I'm going to do just the cross hatches. And so I will start out at one corner and I am going to turn on the guide beam. And I, so now you should be able to see those. Let's come in closer so that you can get a good look. There we are. So there's the guide beams. There's two guide beams. So if I want to turn one of them uh, off, let's see. Yeah, do I turn that off or oh, the sub one? There we go. So now I'm down to one guide beam and I want it to be green. So I changed it from green. So here it's red. And if I had a dark fabric, I could make it white. So the Solaris uh, has all these fabulous options. So I will do some stitches in place up here at the corner. And now I am aiming. Now this guide beam, I can also uh, make it, I can make it longer if I wanted. So like there, you can see it moving a little bit so that it is reaching out further. Okay, so I will just be looking ahead and my guide beam is actually hitting that point way before, before I am. So I'm watching where I'm going ahead, ahead, ahead. And I am going all the way to the end of this block. So here's the other side of the block is this corner. So because these fabrics are all, you know, these blocks are sitting side by side, you know, you may not quite know where that fabric is or where that block ends. So now at this point, because I am uh, not free motion quilting, I am walking foot quilting, which means I need to rotate everything. So I'm going to lift the presser foot so I can rotate all the fabric. And I want to come over and this is my plan now. I am going to come along this block to this corner. Then I will start on the green and I will come and go all the way across the green and hit all of that. So that's the plan. I just start sewing. It'll drop the presser foot as I start to sew and I get to that first green block and I stop. And now I need to pivot the whole thing again. So I have a, mach I have a button that when I push the needle down, it lifts the presser foot, so I just enacted that, and now I don't have to lift it manually, like you saw me do earlier. So here is the guide beam going towards the next intersection, and I'm looking ahead, and I'm doing all the way across the green. So I will end up doing a cross hatch in each of these blocks, and just moving around the block as I can. So with walking foot quilting, this is why using uh, quilt as you go makes it nicer. So I don't have that full quilt doing this. I just have this, oops, I'll do a few, I'll do a bit more here while I'm talking. So I don't have a full quilt to manipulate in here. I just have this smaller quilt. So I'm back where I was before. Now I can't, this is where I came across so that you can see the stitching there. So I will rotate and do across this block, or I could just come down here and do the green, which is what I'm going to do because I can do more maneuvering. So I'm going to come all the way down to the green square and then I will rotate again. And because my quilt sandwich is not too big, 
I am totally able to rotate this comfortably. It doesn't feel, remember, it's just like a, a sort of extra wide table runner, this particular quilt. You can, I'll show you up on the wall again so you can see how big it is. It would come all the way to the end of this block. There we go. So now I am, you know, on the corner again where I will rotate and move, move down to another section. Alrighty. Let's, uh, let's get back up here now. So you could see how doing uh, sections makes it a whole lot easier to manipulate the quilt. So up on the wall is a quilt that is probably about the width of the um, Let's Stay Home that we did in April. It's a little wider. I mean, it's a little, it's a little less wide. The rainbow quilt is a little wider, plus the borders made it wider for sure. Uh, so I would not want to have to have this section plus what you saw me working on all together with batting and backing and trying to rotate it because that way I can't, I can't get those pretty designs that way. There's too much bulk, there's too much pressure, there's too much stress not only on your body, but on the fabric, it pulls. And so it's kind of fighting you the whole time. But when you do it in sections like this, now you have the freedom to use this smaller piece. Okay, so that is the, the 101 of how you look at uh, quilt as you go quilt as you go is very simple it's just taking sections of your quilt quilting those and then assembling the sections afterwards and covering the seam in the back and that's it and it's just a miracle there are other ways to handle it particularly if you have complex designs and there are many things you can go research to sort of do them in slightly more advanced ways this is the very basic way and if you have sashing between your blocks uh, then you just, uh, you're good to go. You have, you have it all, all figured out. Okay. <laughs> so you're going to show me a blue quilt today and you're going to quilt on your quilt, whatever quilt you're working on, whatever method. And I will, uh, be watching to see pictures, uh, or you could tell me down here on YouTube. I love you. Have an amazing day and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.